So you want to know how to store your batteries properly during the times that you don't use them. How do you avoid damage to your batteries when you store them for several months in a row? Because what we want to avoid ultimately is that you come back to your battery and you figure out it's completely dead and you have to end up buying a new one. Well in this video I'll give you the relevant information, I'll give you guidelines and tricks how to reduce the degradation of your battery over time and how to avoid battery failure during storage. Before we go ahead let me introduce myself. My name is Jesse, I'm a renewable energy engineer and I'm specialized in off-grid battery-based solar energy systems. I have run companies in the design and installation of off-grid solar energy systems and I've held the position of energy officer for the United Nations. I founded the company Solar Solution through which I provide videos such as this. I share my knowledge and experience through articles and I provide personal direct support through services on my website. So let's get started. In this video I'll guide you through the information in three different sections. First we'll briefly look at why batteries actually fail. We will then look at how to create the right conditions for your system and how to set it up. And the third section will look at the proper settings for your battery charging equipment. So let's start by looking at the failure principles. Why do batteries degrade over time and how can we avoid it? So the first one is a very gradual and long-term degradation of the battery in the form of internal corrosion. So you're probably aware that inside of the battery there are lead plates, but the lead is mounted on grid plates. So what happens inside of the battery, because it's a very acid environment, these actual grid plates where the lead is mounted on corrode over time and it can finally lead to failure of the battery. The second thing that often happens in batteries is shedding of the active material. So what this means is that during the charging, as the battery reaches the end of a charging cycle, so the battery is almost full, small air bubbles are being created under lead plates and these air bubbles then push off part of the lead. This lead falls down to the bottom of the battery where it's no use to us anymore. It cannot be reclaimed and the result is that the capacity of your battery slowly reduces over time. So the third and the last one I want to mention is sulfation of the battery. Now this happens when a battery is partially discharged and is left in this state of charge for an extended amount of time. Then what happens is that due to chemical reactions in the battery, hard sulfur crystals form inside of the battery and this process cannot be reversed. The result of this is lower capacity of your battery. So now that you have a basic understanding of what leads to the degradation of batteries, let's see what you can do and what kind of conditions you can create in order to avoid this as much as possible. Well, the first one is a very simple but important one and it is try to store your batteries at as low ambient temperatures as possible. I'm not talking about storing it in the freezer, just store it in cool environments. Because whenever the temperature of a battery increases, all the processes go faster, including those processes that lead to the degradation of the battery. So try to keep it cool. Now another very simple but very effective thing you can do is setting the right float voltage for your system. So the float voltage is the voltage at which the battery will be kept if it's 100% charged. So you can find the right value for your specific battery in a specification sheet or ask your supplier. Now, the, if you keep the float voltage too high, you will cause excessive corrosion on the positive grid plates. Remember, we discussed that before. If you set it too low, you're actually undercharging your battery and you can cause excessive sulfation on your battery. Now, the next thing I want to mention is regarding mixing the electrolyte, the acid in your battery properly. So what happens over time, if you leave your battery unused and completely still, the acid, which is heavier than water, will sink to the bottom, create high acidity and therefore corrosion on your grid plates, but the top of the battery will be almost completely water. So the way in which this is accomplished is by making sure that on a periodic basis you get your voltage levels from the battery elevated, whereby gas bubbles, you know, the air bubbles, will form on the lead plates and therefore stir up the liquid of the battery. Now, for those of you who store their batteries on a boat, if the boat is still on the water and from time to time you get significant waves, then these waves will be sufficient enough to stir up the electrolyte. Now, tip number four I want to give on this topic is at all times avoid that any of your battery cells run dry. With running dry, I refer to any of the internal parts of the battery touching the air. So at all times, you always want to make sure that the internal parts of the battery are completely covered with the electrolyte, with the liquid inside of the battery. So please remember that all the batteries, they use more water over time. A new battery doesn't require that much top up, but all the batteries do. A new battery, to give an example, a 200 amp hour uh, flooded lead acid battery 
uses in float stage about a liter of water per year. So you should at least check the battery every four to six months. So this brings us to the last section and I want to give you a few tips and tricks how to set up your power supply in the right way. So I'll describe two different scenarios. One will be if you have access to shore power, so a continuous power supply. And the other one is when you only have access to wind or solar power. So if you're one of the lucky ones that has access to shore power, I highly recommend that you use charging equipment that has advanced charging algorithms built in. So what they can do is that if it recognizes that you're not actually using the battery, so the battery is full, after a couple of days, it will adjust the float voltage and it will lower it a little bit. And what happens then is that gassing is reduced, corrosion inside of the battery is reduced, but it will make sure that it stays high enough to avoid sulfation in the battery. So this is a great option. For those of you who charge their batteries with wind or solar power, here's a, something I highly recommend. Make sure that you configure the settings in your charge controller equipment correctly. So set them specific to your battery equipment. Now my recommendation, don't listen to your friends, to your neighbors, to the salespeople. You just look in the specification sheet. Look up the specification sheet for your specific battery. It will tell you what the adequate absorption and float voltages are and set this in your equipment. One tip for those of you who use solar panels to charge their batteries, please don't cover some panels and leave the other ones exposed. I understand why people do this and it's very great that they think about it, but just leave them all exposed to the sun Make sure that you configure your charge controllers in the right way and the system will do a perfect job. So now a question for you. If there's something else that you'd like to learn more about, let me know in the comments below. I'll use this as inspiration to provide more videos for you or for others. If you like the video, it's always nice to hear, uh, so give me a thumbs up. So that's all for now. See you in the next video.